Oh, we got so much to talk about today. Uh, welcome in. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. I know. Um, so one thing with NBA free agency kicking off when it does is there's like this entire three day period where like none of us are here to talk not about agree it. with the scoring. I did not oh, agree. I didn't either. I didn't either. <laughs> that scoring was the poo. Welcome CBS radio. Yeah. Thanks a lot, CBS. Uh, anyways, lot to get to today. Let's let's just start with the Kings. Um Let's make the move on draft night to trade Rashawn Holmes and the number 24 pick to Dallas and open up 34 to 36 million (laughs) dollars in cap space. What were they going to do? Were they going to swing a big trade? Was a big free agent coming in? No, no, (laughs) none of it. Actually, yeah, (laughs) they use that money to basically uh, bring their own guys back. So we've been trying to kind of figure out who has signed and where their money is going because with the NBA salary cap, if you're trying to figure it out, um, don't just don't. It's really difficult. Mm -hmm. I've spent years trying to figure this thing out and it's still just always. Once you think you have it figured out, that's when a new wrinkle gets thrown in. And now we have a new CBA that's going to throw in even more wrinkles. So just to give you an idea, we'll kind of do a quick uh, rundown of what the Kings did. They re-signed Harrison Barnes to a three-year, $54 million contract. Love that. Um, on the day free agency opened, they announced that they had reached a deal with Trey Lyles to come back. Trey Base. Really love stand that. Stand up. I believe that's two years and $16 million. Yeah, the Trey Base really stood up, too. They did. Uh, and it was also announced that day, too, it looks like they're bringing in now former Indiana Pacer Chris, <laughs> Chris Duarte. Love that. Who I believe was a 37-year-old rookie a couple years ago. Yeah. Chris Duarte is like the oldest rookie of all time. Some yes. are calling him Maple Forte. No one, no, no one has one, called him no, that. Not one person Some people that. are calling him Maple Forte. <laughs> He's going to try and make it work. I don't think that's going to be a thing. Shout out to uh, Chris Duarte, though. will be the uh, second Montreal-born Sacramento King of all time. Uh, Corey Joseph? No, he was, uh, oh. I believe Corey Joseph is... He's not a Quebecian. Mm, I know he's Canadian. Though. Yeah, they're not all the same. I'm not great at geography. <laughs> didn't didn't pass geography. Oh, Bill Winnington, also born in Montreal, Quebec, ah, Canada. The so there Bill you go. Winnington. Absolutely. Love fun that. trivia for you to bring to the water cooler. Today. <laughs> so they have that and then uh, brought back Alex Lynn. That to me was. Wow. I don't want to say I'm shocked by it because yeah. it's like, you know, I think he's getting the vet minimum or he's getting like the vet exception. One of the various exceptions in the NBA salary cap to right. come back. And then the two things that I think would be the um, the headline moves for the Kings is we've been talking now for months with Sasha Vizankov, yeah, the EuroLeague MVP, come Almost over. Almost two years now. Yeah, Not much. No, it's for been real. Multiple, been, yeah. yeah, but I mean, it's we've really we've been really <laughs> diving deep into it. Yeah. Uh, he does. He signs a three year, twenty million dollar deal hey, to be a Sacramento time. King. I thought that was a uh, good money. Uh, good AAV for him. Yeah, definitely. At, at what is it? It's somewhere around seven. six, right? Yeah. yeah, it's six and a half, seven. I think that's really good for a guy that's proven to uh, to you know have some pedigree over there in Europe. And I think he's going to have a really big role on this team. The fact that the Kings are getting him for three years at that figure, I think he's going to. I think he's definitely going to uh, prove that that's that's going to be a really big value for them. I think so as well. And then of course the biggest news of all came on Saturday night. Demonte Sabonis renegotiates Ooh. and extends. Probably not something you're used to hearing in the NBA, but right. it is a thing that happens. Uh, he will, in total, over the next five years, get $217 million. Well earned. If you want to know how that money works, uh, he'll get an $8 million raise this year. So mm-hmm. he was scheduled to make around 22. He'll be making close to 30. Mm-hmm. And then for the next four years, so from the 24 to 28, he will get four years and $195 mm. million. Basically, the Kings have locked up him now for – Four more seasons after this one. I right. think De'Aaron's locked up for the next four seasons. Until 25, 26. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, Chris, just taking everything in that you saw the Kings do over the last three days, what was your what was your just first feeling? I mean, there were a lot of people who were afraid of the Kings doing the direct quotes here, running it back. Mm-hmm. And I shared that sentiment. I think that was a big talking point just leading into free agency is, is all of this leading to the Kings just essentially going to pay all their people and not bring in any new Kyle Kuzma, Jeremy Grant, Brooke Lopez, some sexy new name that we can all get excited about and convince ourselves that now the Kings are going to make the conference title and all this stuff. Um, And I think those people's, uh, you know, worst reality or worst nightmare became reality. And I think, now that we're sitting here in it, I don't see how anyone can really look at this free agency and be incredibly frustrated. To me, 
this is this is exactly what the Kings needed to do. They they had a really good roster last year. I mean, you know, yeah. you could say the three seed and the 48 wins and all that. Um, but they they were a winning team last year and had the core of a winning team. So instead of breaking that up and trying to to kind of spark something similar next year with new guys, new faces, they're just they're going to try and build on what right. they had last year. And to me, that's exactly that's the Denver just, Nugget approach. That's the perfect <laughs> thing to do, right? The Nuggets. It didn't work for them every single year. They pounded their head into a wall for what felt like three, four, five years. And then eventually, finally, after some level of continuity, and yes, bringing in guys like Aaron Gordon mm -hmm. and Bruce Brown, bringing in good pieces on the edges, that's what eventually got them to the top of the mountaintop. And I think that's what the Kings need. If they're going to take anything from this Denver situation, it's don't blow it up. Keep keep the core there right and then just add on the side you can add a key cog at some point you can yeah. add that you third have a star ton at of some tradable point. contracts right a ton of tradable it almost feels like Monty had the intention of yes. if you look at how the king's salaries are broken down there's a 32 million dollar guy there's a 17 15 and eight a six a four there's tons of different numbers that you can combine and create really a lot of flexibility with what you want to do with your roster moving forward. And I think that it's just, it's a huge win for the Kings to still have their main crux of guys, but also there is some new pieces. They are adding Chris Duarte, who I assume will be in the rotation. Sasha Vezenkov, who I assume will be a massive part of the rotation. And then there's guys like Trey Lyles who are incredibly versatile. They're coming back, but you know, with the Kings really only bringing Alex Len as their only center, something tells me that Trey Lyles is probably going to play a new different role and probably play a lot more backup five. Which is what I, that to me, that's where yeah. he thrived last year. Absolutely. When they, especially in the playoffs, you know, that was my one. I don't like to critique game plans of coaches, yeah. like really, you especially know, in hindsight. Yeah, right? in yeah. hindsight critique. But I thought, especially in that game seven, when they went to that small ball five lineup with Trey Lyles and when they had done it earlier in the series too, like that gave the Warriors problems. Mm -hmm. And I understand why he went away with it. It's like, dude, Domas got us here. We're going to, we're going right. to, we're going to, you know, we're going to run with Domas. Yeah. Like, and they were it. getting killed on the glass and yeah. taking out the best rebounder in the league's probably a scary proposition. But the other side of that was, is when you had Lyles out there at the five, you, you had to bring Looney had to come out. Right. Exactly. And so you're taking a guy who's been the best rebounder of the series. Absolutely. Off of the glass. Right. And I thought that helped. Um, we saw them do that with him a couple other times this year where mm -hmm. it's like, all right, we're going to go with Trey at the five. And it brought the big man out. Mm -hmm. So I think you're definitely going to see that lineup a lot more should this roster stay what it is right now. Right. Uh, my first reaction was, I'm like, it felt like deja vu. Mm -hmm. And not with the idea that deja vu of like, oh, this is the same roster from last year, essentially, with a mm -hmm. couple new pieces. This is like, it was basically everything I saw was like, man, the Kings are going to slide back. Because... Team X added this guy. Team Y added this guy. Team Z added these guys. Mm -hmm. These teams, all of them got better than the Kings. This was the same conversation we had last off right. season, like even at the deadline. At the and that's what I say. And then it felt again deja vu at the deadline because it was like, oh my god, the Clippers made all of these moves. The Mavericks, the Mavericks, the Lakers, the Suns. The Sun, everybody made these moves, and it's like, well, it was a nice story for right. the Sacramento and the Kings, Kings. Just stood pat. How dare Monty McNair watch all of this movement happen around him and just sit there in his office? And what happened? They brought in Kessler Edwards. They brought in Kessler Edwards, <laughs> and that was the move of the deadline. No. <laughs> the point I'm making is <laughs> no, they were like, nah, we kind of got a good thing going. Right. Continuity. Yeah. All of these other teams, yeah, they've made some trades, but, you know, like the Clippers made, I thought, some really good moves last year. Yeah. Deadline. It didn't matter because Kawhi Leonard and Paul George got hurt. Right. The Suns, you know, bringing Kevin Durant. And huge. Huge, right? Big, big move. It didn't matter because he got hurt. <laughs> Played for, like six regular season games. And then in the playoffs, Chris Paul and DeAndre Ayton get hurt, and right. then you get waxed because Devin right. Booker doesn't show up in game six. Right. Again. So that doesn't matter. You know, the Lakers were the ones where their moves actually seemed to really pay off, but that's yeah. because LeBron and AD were healthy in the playoffs. Those are two big cogs. That's it. If yeah. one of those guys is out in the playoffs, we're not talking about any of that. Point I'm saying is the Kings are really betting on, like, look, all of these other teams that have made these moves around us, I mean, they're good moves on paper. Mm -hmm. I don't want to sit there and take away and laugh like LOL because it's not that. But you look at all the teams like that, the Phoenix, the Clippers, all of these teams. Bro, their key guys are all still injury prone. Right, absolutely. All of them. 
So you're basically like, yeah, we're going to bet on Brad Bill missing 30 games in right. Phoenix this year. We're going to bet on KD missing 30 games in Phoenix this year. We're going to bet that Kawhi can't play more than 50 games. Paul George can't play more than 50 games. Right. And we'll get into this later because I went down a rabbit hole last night of just where a lot of these superstars on these stacked Western Conference teams, how many games they've played yeah. over the last four years. I would guess not. Oh, it's ugly. Yeah, it's ugly. So we got a lot to get into today. Uh, Two teams I know you really wanted to talk about. Yes, My Uh, two most (laughs) intriguing teams of this free agency so far. What trail are the Blazers blazing? (laughs) And then the Houston Rockets had a bunch of money to spend. And well, they spent it. Yeah, (laughs) we'll talk about that next right here on Sacktown Sports and SacktownSports.com.